Hi, well, here we are. We're on the porcelain project. Give a bit of an update. I suppose one of the things I want to talk about is about characteristics of porcelain and when you're buying that porcelain. Okay, there's been a lot said out there by a lot of people um, on the internet. Um, you'll find that suppliers will give a limited amount of information about porcelain. It's not very often you'll see a company that will suggest on how to lay porcelain. It's all a bit ambiguous. There is some information out there, but there's not a lot out there. They, they tend to not get involved. Manufacturers of any products um, try not to get involved in the uh, installation of porcelain and with lots, lots of other products as well. So when it comes to porcelain, um, it's basically a, a product that's fired at high temperatures. 1200 degrees centigrade okay so it's fired at high temperatures they can almost replicate anything that we see or we've got when it comes to igneous stone um, uh, sedimentary stone they can uh, slate they can they can you know uh, uh, sandstone they can they can create the same they can replicate the image okay uh, that you see in these products um, Apart from firing it at these high temperatures, which makes it very, very hard, is one of the things that you have to consider is that if it gets chipped, um, if it's glazed porcelain, so you get things like glazed porcelain and forward body porcelain, and you'd like to think that if it, if it got chipped, it's going to be the same colour all the way through. That's basically what full body porcelain is. And uh, how they achieve high quality uh, full body porcelain is by using high quality fillers that's the what the the, the 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 materials that they used to make the porcelain it's hydraulically pressed it's fired at high temperatures but it's about the fillers the cheaper the fillers the worst that uh, the worst product you, you're gonna have you know it's just not gonna maintain its integrity so when you start cutting through with glazed porcelain what's gonna happen is that some of the water ingression is going to get through so you want really full body porcelain it comes at a cost there's no ifs or buts about it so these are the things that you have to consider when you're buying the porcelain what you'll find at the moment porcelain is being made all, all the way around the world um, generally generally the Italians and the Spanish have been making porcelain for a long long time and it's very good but it doesn't mean to say that you're not going to get bad porcelain manufacturers in these country though they are the leaders in manufacturing and um, you'll have places like Turkey and China and India that are producing this now because they can see this is where the marketplace is in manufacturing porcelain and uh, there are suggestions uh, that some of the um, these these countries that are producing these products are actually making it on for example on Italian running gear and saying and they're putting stamps on the back saying it's made in Italy so you've got to check out the ethnicity of your porcelain fully understand what you're going to be installing in your garden whether it's a contractor or whether it's you or whether it's, it's, it's a friend you've just got to check out the ethnicity of your of your porcelain to see where it comes from so important that you actually do that um, you should be asking the suppliers as well where it comes from and if they have any certification of the um, of, of the product itself it's just so so important um, of course that you've got to make sure that your porcelain is uh, it comes with a R, R11 rating for external use anything below than an R11 rating isn't suitable it's not up to British standard okay so you've got to make sure it comes with an R11 rating uh, and that's an approved uh, slip test uh, by, the, by the government basically to make sure that you ain't going to slip over though it doesn't mean to say that any wearing course what we walk on on a day-to-day -day basis it won't get slippy even tarmac on motorways can get iced over so take that into consideration if you've got put fairy liquid oil on there it's going to become slippy so when people ask well it, it seems slippy because it's shiny um, it's probably you know it, you just got to take in consideration the R11 it's an, an official test uh, approved okay um, the other thing of course is that porcelain 
the British standard for laying sandstone is a 1 in 84, okay? A 1 in 84, and um, sandstone has a high porosity value, so it's going to soak the water up, okay? When you have home stone or even riven stone, it's going to ingress into the, the, the structure of the stone quicker than what porcelain does. Porcelain tends, the water tends to sit on top of the, 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 the product because it has um, it has very little uh, porosity value and you have a thing called water tension and the water will sit on the top for a while. It will evaporate and it will go. And that's why they suggest a one in 60 fall for porcelain. But that seems, seems a lot to be honest. It really does seem a lot. So you've got to make sure that you get the correct falls on there. You can do this. Don't just fall it over eight meters. You can fall fall it four meters one way and four meters the other way and fall from the house so you can have like a camber or what we call a cross fall think about getting the water over getting a, a, it away over the shortest distance just as they would do when they're building a road they get the water over away over the shortest distance as quickly as possible that's what you've got to consider um porcelain comes in in 20 mil and it comes in 10 mil and it'll also come in in 30 mil um, when you look at, I get asked regularly, can you lay 10 mil outside? And some people will say, no, you can't, but you can, but you need, then you, you'll, you have to think about laying it on a, on a concrete bed. Okay. If you're laying 10 mil and it needs to adhere to that concrete, um, it's so important because if it doesn't adhere, it's just going to pop up. So there are dif different laying methods, but you can lay 10 mil outside, but you'd have to use an exterior adhesive. You couldn't necessarily, could you lay it on a mortar? You'd be, have to be very, very skillful to do that. Uh, 20 mil is what everybody's laying over here. In the States and other countries, areas where they have a freeze belt, they're laying on a 30 millimeter, what we call a 3CM uh, porcelain product, and they're laying it on sharp sand, okay? Um, the Americans uh, tend to do this because of this freeze thaw effect that they have out there but there are places in the states and in canada and i'll give you an example there is a company called banus stone that's b-a-n-u-s i think it is banus stone in canada they actually lay on they do wet lay okay and they have freezing conditions out there and they have they get they suffer with the freeze thaw effect and they lay their their stone out there on a wet mix okay but internally they lay the um the wet mix on a concrete bed okay so everything's adhering nothing's going to move and yes they'll probably have to put steel in it so there are ways and there are methods it doesn't mean to say that our way of laying products in the uk is always correct and the same applies for anywhere across the, the world you know um so there are different ways of laying porcelain I know that you're going to ask questions from this video about um, these methods and about uh, what porcelain you're having and how it should be laid. One of the things that, that I'm really concerned about at the moment, and I think it's so important, is that people say that porcelain doesn't need to be sealed. They say, why would you, you know, because it's got this shiny finish. But the fact is, if you looked at a piece of glass, a piece of glass that has micropores in there, that's why we clean windows because they get dirty. The water, the, the dirt will hold on a piece of glass. And if it's gonna hold on a piece of glass, it's gonna hold on your porcelain. So your porcelain does need to be sealed, but the, probably the most important part of the patio that needs to be sealed is if you've got a cementitious grout, which is gonna be porous, it's gonna have a different structure to the porcelain and that needs to be sealed, you know? I, the last thing I want is to go back to a project and go and knock on the door of a client, you know, um, a year on and just call in by the off chance because I was passing and go around and look at all, all the joints all green. Yes, it happens. Yes, we can power on it and we can clean, okay? But wouldn't it be nice if you come back to a patio, having visited, returned to a project, then visiting the client and look at it and think, hey, this is looking sharp, this is looking clean, this is looking nice. So when it comes to sealers, there's, like I said, there's been a lot said on this. You've got to make sure that you know what you're buying out there. Don't be using a top coat sealer like a varnish because it's just going to sit on the surface. 
what you need is probably for porcelain a and i spoke to ryan my friend about this uh, who uh, is a chemist and you have to use an impregnating an impregnating solvent sealer an impregnating solvent sealer and that's going to get down into the surface but it's also going to allow the joints to breathe you want your joints your grouts grouts to actually breathe because if, if you don't allow it to breathe then it's going to hold up uh, underneath and you're going to get all the moisture and you're going to get you're going to get problems basically so you need uh, a breathable solvent sealer an impregnating solvent sealer hey look there's loads to say on this i just wanted to give you an update of um, what i'm doing at the moment i'm having a little bit of a moment on here now just sat back and having a look thinking of what I'm actually doing because this is not just like laying sandstone you're laying this porcelain it's like laying a tile then it's so unforgiving uh, with the joints we're using a four mil joint and that's a good point a four mil joint in this case and the reason I'm using a four mil joint is because it's not too big but it, it, the four mil allows the grout to get down in uh, between the joints um, Everybody will have their own opinion on what grout to use, and um, I can't comment. I can't comment on other grouts because I simply don't know them because I've never used them. And sometimes we have to uh, sort of. Uh, it's about risk and reward, and sometimes we do have to take it a risk. And the reward is that if you're doing something that is really, you know, that's going to work, and you've heard some good things about it, and uh, it, that grout system is going to maintain its integrity then it's probably worth the risk because the last thing you want to do is to go back you know this is a real investment for you as a contractor and a real investment for the consumer your client base as well so hey look so much to say isn't there so much to say um, about this I find it really intriguing and it's changing from day to day people now are becoming real experts on laying on porcelain and um, I don't know we all got a lot to learn we all got a lot to learn. Look, if you want any ans uh, any questions answered uh, regarding this topic, just drop us an email at info at greentoplandscapes.co.uk and um, don't forget to give this a like and uh, press the notification button. But the most important thing is don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. Have a nice day.